Welcome back to the program. Now we shift gears to the issue of politics and in focus is the internal wrangling of the Labour Party. It's festering over time and they came and they made a very big show and everybody knows that 6.1 million voters wanted Peter Obi to be president and that outing was quite impressive. They have numbers in the National Assembly as well across state assemblies so we can begin to talk about how they've come but all of that success seem to be not working to put them together as a party. Different groups fighting for different things. Lead leadership is at the core of it, the Abure leadership. That's why we have the spokesperson of the chief spokesperson, I should say, will be that the organization, Mr. Dr. Yunisa Tanko, joining us right here in our Lagos studio. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tanko, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you, thank you for having me. Good morning, gentlemen and ladies. And there's a lot to talk about your party, but let me, maybe let me start from the end before I get to the beginning. Is there ever going to be an end in sight to the wrangling on your party? Well, uh, before I answer your question, uh, I'd like to just um, solidarize with our brothers and sisters in the Christendom and in the Happy Easter. Mm. And then why they are just closing down on their Lenten period, we are still fasting. They are just taking it up so that we can finish up our hands in few days' time. So happy Easter to everybody. And I hope and pray that this particular period will give us uh, hope that uh, Nigeria will be a better country in no distance time. Now, to answer your question, everything that has a beginning has an end. There's nothing that comes from the sky that will not land on the ground. So definitely there will be an ending solution to the problems. At the point in time, nobody thought that labor could get to this particular level. But then here we are, good or bad, we are all in the news. As we're speaking now, almost everybody that doesn't know labor now is knowing labor. So it's even the pure publicity on its own. So as far as we are concerned, there will be solutions to most of the problems, as long as we do the right thing. All we are asking for, or majority of Nigerians are asking for, is for us to do the right thing. Even Nigeria itself, if the right thing has been done, many of us won't find ourselves in this particular very damning and very unacceptable position in which we find ourselves. So, therefore, people and leaders have made concerted effort in trying to midwife the corrections and some of the areas in which we need to improve. And that starts with our principal. Peter Gregory Obi. His Excellency have made concerted effort in trying to intervene at every point we have these particular issues and trying to improve. What did he do? He first of all met with the, uh, when the issue of the national convention came up, he gave suggestions to the national chairman that because we are bigger now, we need to have consultation with a wider level, meet with responsible and interested people, i.e. the TUC and the NLC, stakeholders, the obedient group, young generation people who are interested in seeing Nigeria work, meet with you know, leaders who have different ideas that can midwife us into a greater height. All of these were the suggestions that he made. And not only did he make those suggestions, he actually practicalized it because he met with the members of the National Assembly, Federal House of Reps, he met with the senators, he met with leadership of the party, recently even in Asaba, trying to give them ideas on how he thinks certain things could be done and you could improve our situation. But of course, you know how politics are. Sometimes some people may be giving information, I mean, uh, uh, trying to encourage people, but they'll do something different. You can only take a horse to the river, but you cannot force it to drink water. So that's exactly what Mr. Peter Obi has done. His Excellency has done so greatly in order to see he can find solutions to some of the problems that we find ourselves in. Well, uh, about what he's doing and what he seems not to be doing, uh, that seems to be an important part of the conversation as far as the stability of the Labour Party is concerned. But I, I doubt that that would be you know, the most important uh, place to continue this conversation from. You talked about doing the right thing, which is what is expected of everybody. And, you know, those uh, of us who are looking at the Labour Party from without are wondering if the Labour Party is doing the right thing, you know, for the stability of the party and those who are looking up to that party as an alternative. Speaking of which, calls for the res resignation of the national uh, chairman of the party, who has now re-emerged as the re-elected national chairman of the party. So people are asking where their ward congresses conducted uh, before 
his emergence or emergence as the elected national chairman of the Labour Party, why hasn't he addressed questions of allegations of financial impropriety amongst, you know, all others of forgery and perjury? Of course, he's come out to, you know, to react to some of the things that have been done by members of the NLC, but he hasn't particularly responded to these allegations. So just to mention a few of the things that a few of the questions that Nigerians are asking about the Labour Party. You know, interestingly, I've always advised anybody who wants to join any group or organization, get the documents of that particular organization and read it. This is the constitution of the Labour Party. Anybody that wants to be a member of the Labour Party should have the constitution and should have the manifesto. It will be a guiding principle for anything you want to do within the party. But if you don't have it, you are not informed. You are not like a blind man. Section 9 of the Constitution, subsection 1, subsection 2, subsection 3, talk about membership. It talked about privileges. It talked about procedures. It talked about obligations. Section 10 of the Constitution talked about the privileges, the right to vote and be voted for. It talked about it. Section 10 of the Constitution talked about the issue of the structural arrangement of the party from what level to the local government, to the state, and then to the national level. And then these are documents that bind you as a member of the party. So, sometime in 2002, the Labour Party had been having these particular lingering issues with the Nigerian Labour Congress on the fact of leadership issue and some other internal matters. Uh, here is where I give credit to the leadership of Buri because he was able to calm down and uh, there was a peace being brokered by Comrade Femi Fallon. I keep on repeating it because uh, sometimes he even asks me why am I mentioning his name? Because he did, he did the work and then we must give credit to him. For Comrade Femi Fallon and uh, Professor Pato Tomi, Wale Okuni and some, a lot of others sat down at the Nigerian Labour Congress House and midwife a truth that look, we have the Labour Party which represents the interests of the Nigerian workers. And most of the people who are suffering in this particular country at the moment, most of them are Nigerian workers, the middle class, let's just leave it as that. So then there was a dispute resolution department in INEC. At that dispute resolution department, instead of you going from left, right and center going to court, there was an agreement. The document was signed by Comedy Ayuba Waba. That particular document was also published, and there was an agreement. And the agreement was that there will be an inauguration of the Board of Trustees. And the inauguration of the Board of Trustees was also ducted into a national convention, what they call a unity convention. The unity convention will start from the world level. World to the local government, state, and then the federal. And there are two things to it. Thinking very correctly, the idea behind it is that let's build the structures from the words. Let's start building so that we can have an advantage, so that nobody will accuse you that you do not even have structures just like the way they are peddling. So let's start from the word. It was agreed, signed by also by Barrister Julius Aburi. So there's a document already, you know, domiciled at INEC, which INEC was the mediator within that. So it's a document that you cannot run away from. Well, in their own wisdom, they decided that they were going to have a convention that is more, uh, more or less a close convention, not an, a, 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 I mean, an expanded election, uh, convention, which majority of the members are clamoring for. So therefore, that is where the problem started. All right. So, and that must be done for the Labour Party to be great as a political party that everybody is expecting. So, so how national in outlook is this unity, com this convention that they decided to hold? How national in outlook when you consider the membership strength of the Labour Party, which I believe cuts across all states of the Federation? Quite honestly, that convention, we could have had a bigger convention. Let's be true about So it's not fully representative no, of the no, interests no, 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 no. of the Labour Party? Because, let me tell you, and there, sometimes, that's where you have to fault some of our comrades. Because the true owners of the Labour Party are the Nigerian Labour Congress and the TUC. There is no local government. There is no word that the Labour is not represented. What we should have done was to encourage our members to be in the political party, be the cat carrying members of the political party. If they were, maybe some of the problems that we are having, we wouldn't have had it. The truth. So 
I know there have been some challenges along the line. Some members have already gone to another political party and or because there was lack of cohesion. But now we had an opportunity to build the party. So therefore, we should encourage our people union members to join the party so that they can build it, so that they can challenge if there are infractions into the constitution. As we are seeing it at the moment now. But if there are nobody within the world and all, who will say the right thing to be done? If, of course, those who find themselves in a the position of power will always find a way of using that opportunity to continue to be in the position. So as far as we are concerned, honestly, we should have set the country agog by having the World Congress, everybody, including our principal, everybody should have gone back to his world to build the structure of the party. It could have been an advantageous situation for all of us. There wouldn't be any, any problem. And here, I must mention, nobody is against any particular person. Just do the right thing and there will be benefit for everybody. They say he who seeks, as our principal usually say, he who seeks to be called excellency must come through an excellent way. Here you go. Right, so a um, few questions for people who are, um, who are still trying to wrap their head around what's going on. So is Mr. Gila Saburi widely accepted as national chairman? Well, at the moment now, if that particular question that you are asking me uh, can be justified, we wouldn't have had problems. So that's a no? Because there's a problem, honestly. So he's not widely accepted? Because there's a problem, yes, of course he's not. Okay, so are you saying he should resign as well? No, all I'm asking for, the constitution, as I said, gave a guide. He has a right to contest. He has a right. But let's put it up to the table so everybody can contest. So we should opening. step back. Yes, we should. It's, it's, it's the normal thing to so be done. Which is like, you, you should not more be the chairman. Resign. Let us conduct this process as it ought to As be. a chairman, yeah. he has a right. There's a process. Right. The process is number one. You put up an uh, Com electoral no, no, I understand you. So I just want to know what the what the demands are. So we are no, we're the, clear. The, the what, demands is very clear. Yeah. Let us have an inclusive convention. So that's for the Obidati organization. Yes, let us have an open and acceptable convention that will carry everybody. Put up a committee that will be in charge of the convention. That's okay. how it is done. Okay. Everywhere. So just to be clear, mm -hmm. since we're in the Easter period, yes. and, um, I just want to draw this analogy. So within Jesus's camp, mm -hmm. there was the Judas, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> that betrayed. Yes. There was a Peter that denied. And I'm not even talking about Mr. Peter. It's okay. just a coincidence. So who is the Judas in this case? Who is betraying the party? Well, I cannot say exactly who is betraying the party. But once you are not doing the right thing, you yourself know you are betraying the party. I, as I'm seated here, if I'm found wanting not doing the right thing for the interest of the party, I could be counted as a Judas. Okay, so let's, let's answer, let's tick those boxes further. Mm. Uh, the, the Labour Party is sending conflicting signal, and I'll tell you why. Mm. You, you, raise, you, raise, you talked about the concern raised by the presidential candidates. Mm. Uh, he wasn't in that convention. Yes. You were not in that convention. True. The governor of Abia State was not in that convention. Yes. But his deputy was the one that announced the winner mm. of, of, you know, affirmed the uh, Bure and I heard his executive, all of that. And I heard, uh, we, 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 we understand that at some point he was even saying, look, just like Peter Obi, let's consult further and wider so that we'll have a more robust uh, convention. So having said that, and having these people there is a bit confusing. That's mm. on one hand. Mm. 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 Second, when you look at what you compose of a national convention, mm. what exactly did Julius Abure not tick in the boxes besides the controversy around forgery and allegations and all of that? Because I'm looking here, uh, national chairman and all members of the TUC, okay, this is where the problem is, which is the first, right? So the president and vice president elected, governors and deputy, members of the National Assembly, chairman and councillors. So if all of these 11, I think in your article, that should be article 14, composition, function and powers of the organs of the National Convention now. There are about um, almost uh, 20 something items here. If must all these boxes be ticked for it to be approved as a national convention, and what is left besides a special national convention? When you, when you do what you agree to do, or what is constitutionally right, it's where you miss the point. Like yes. I told you, there was an agreement. Mm. 
for a unity convention prior to even him becoming the national chairman there were agreement that okay look for us to move further we need to have a national convention that will be inclusive to everybody starting from the world to the local government to the state and the federation once you do that every other boxes are filled once you do that you are in the clear and you have the right to contest you may even be popular than even some of the candidates but when you refuse to do that then you are missing the point it's just like you taking you're supposed to go to the right you just decide to go to the left completely so, so these are where the major mistakes was being made so does this mean now that the only way to resolve this is through a special national convention Which or it has what happened has been invalidated because all the components that are required are not met what exactly is it yes now even in section uh, article 13 of the constitution subsection c give room for special national convention in okay. case of issues of this nature so everybody has a right now to go back to the drawing board and agree on the processes that will be followed to usher in or revalidate or re 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 reconfirm a national leader and that mm. can be done through this particular process mm. once this is done there won't be problems uh, Mr. Tonko, if I'm not mistaken, yes. um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, there seems to be a slight adjustment in your stance mm. on the legitimacy of uh, the uh, position of Barista Julius Saburi as national chairman of the Labour Party. The last time we had you, you were firmly in support of his leadership, uh, but now uh, you're saying that he has a right to contest, but things have not been done uh, properly. I, I wonder if this has anything to do with um, the NLC's latest position that things should be done properly and the picketing of Labour Party offices in Abuja, in Edo State, as we have seen, and the uh, position of uh, the NLC president that Mr. Julius Aburi should resign. And, and they are reiterating their stance that the NLC in fact owns the Labour Party. Am I correct about the adjustment in your stance? No, there was no adjustment. Let me reiterate. At the point in which I mentioned and put on ground that Julius Aburo is the national chairman at that time of the Labour Party, there was no ambiguity because there was no issue of leadership because he was the chairman at that point in time. And so also the same position that uh, Joe Ajiro, Comrade Joe Ajiro also took. Remember, Pastor Joe Ajiro did not only make statements in support of Julius Aburo, he was at the National Secretariat to give him full support because we don't give room for intruders when we have a guiding rule. The difference now is that the rules and regulation and the agreement that was already been made, which will have make us more bigger, has been completely kept in abeyance. That is the difference. Or, or is the difference more so because the NLC is, is stating its ownership of the Labour Party and wants to see to it that things are done differently? No, things should be done rightly. We are unionists and we are guided by rules and regulations. And when we made an agreement on what we need to do, which we, need, we, we must do them, Abure is a unionist mm. and so also is Barista Joe Ajuro and majority of us, including my humble self. So, so do you agree with the NLC when the NLC says that, look, things are not being done the way they used to, the, the party is, is for the welfare of the people and to enable um, people at the lower rung of the ladder to be able to contest for political offices. But in fact, what is being done at the Labour Party now is selling forms at a very high cost to people. Well, here, that is the position of the Nigerian Labour Congress and the Constitution. What, what is your own position? And it's true. I support that. I support that hundred percent but you see as you move along just the way we are the salaries that were being paid to the nigerian workers way back then i work as a civil servant i collected nothing like that sometimes 20 30 naira at a point today 30 naira of voting naira had not cannot be used so definitely there are increases in costs for the party to survive there must be some kind whether that level of amount was commensurate to what is agreed upon that need to have been discussed so that everybody will be in, be, be carried along i support the idea because we want to move people those who do not believe that they have the right to vote because of money they can move into the party and write for, run for election and that should be considered i i strongly believe in that there must be a symbiotic agreement in order to know the right amount of money to be paid so that we can carry everybody along 
That is the target. Politics is quite interesting. Mm. You don't know what will happen in the coming days. No permanent enemies, they say. Who knows? You could see the uh, Papa group now <laughs> and the Aburi group now, you know, shaking hands and hugging. It used to be you. I mean, your group, the Obidati organization and the Aburi group. So how many like, groups do we have now? Imagine. That's true. How many groups how many do we groups have? Do we have? within no. the Labour Party. It seems like we have four groups. We no, have no. The... As far as I am concerned, there is only one group I know. No, no, no. but you no, don't have no. the same interests. You are no, saying no, no, that no, no, you no. should step back. Interests are different. So how many interests? You interest? just understand. Okay, so tell us how many interests do we have. I have made it clear that the interest is within the whole. One single interest. Let us do the right thing. When you see us going uh, against the Apapa group and all of this, because they do, did not do the right thing. So there are at least three interests. No, no, no. You yes, are the one Apapa, by saying You just the, said the interests are no, different. No, no, no. Interests are different. Yes. Yes. So but how that, many interests do we have? We have only the Apapa one interest. In, no, but you say mm -hmm. that Mr. There's Bure one should interest. step back and the right thing be done. He says the right thing was done, so I am the national chairman. Two interests at least. Then we have the Apapa group mm -hmm. with its own interest mm -hmm. as well. So at least I have mentioned three interests. Okay. Yes or yes. Now, Kyrie, what I said is clear. Yeah. One interest. The interest is for us to do the right thing. Nothing more, nothing. You could they take a sub 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 set of that okay, particular sub interest. Sub so how many sub interests do we interest have? One interest that we have is for us to have the right thing being done. And that we maintain. And right. anybody who will trying to do that subset, always when you bring it on the table, it's like a train station. It goes straight where it's going. I didn't Nobody expect anything less. I mean, you're a politician. <laughs> You've been at this for a long no, time. No, no, no. So at least but, three but you also interest. agree with me that I've been consistent. Absolutely. So let's, yes. let's just be clear. Mm. Three sub-interests, yes. as you put it. Yes. At least three sub-interests. But my question particularly is yes. this now. As all of this is happening, yes. you have, as Jeffrey said earlier on, you have the, the majority, the APC, for example, capitalizing on this and saying, okay, this is a good one. We can also, <laughs> you know, glean from this mm. and add to our numbers, what I like to mm. That's what politics is. Mm. Even the PDP saying, oh, this is a good one because we need more numbers. In fact, the Minister of Works had said that God told him <laughs> that the president will spend eight years in power. I wonder what you are being told from divinity. Do you, are you, are you against that? Because I know that P Mr. Peter Abiu is probably going to be given another ticket to run again. But that's against what... Honestly, I'm going to remember that fast. Right. <laughs> I believe in God, and God never forsakes his children. The Nigerian people are suffering so hard, and we need a right leader. And I believe Peter Gregory will be could lead us. So better. God did not tell you eight years ago? Oh, no, I am not a pastor or any man. Mm -hmm. uh, I just believe in God. Mr. Tanko, I'm looking at the legalese. Yes. Um, if you go to court, yes. which you're very familiar with, yes. justice is according to the law. Yes. But it's still that conflicting signal that this Labour Party, the third force, is still giving us. That article I read, I'm going to read it again. Okay. And what option is left? Because if it's a faulty foundation, it's going to affect this is a four, every four years. That's a national convention. It's supposed to be every four years yes. or so. It says Article 14, composition, functions, and powers of a party organs. One that national convention of the party shall hold once in, in four, four years. years. Exactly. What shall be the composition? The very first composition, which was absent in that convention, national chairman and all members of the National Executive Council, mm. including the NLC and TUC president and general secretary. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that invalidate what happened in Inewi? I Shouldn't that call for, because what I'm saying in essence is, if you really, every group is really interested in the development of the party, you should follow the law, else you're gonna have a problem in the future. Sure. And if your group is so interested, what about legal action? What about the special convention? You've not answered that question. No, 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 I just said it. <clears throat> that I said there was an agreement. That was where the faulty the, the, the fault foundation come from. There was an agreement signed by, by the state judge Aburi with Comrade Ayubawaba. It's published. I'm not talking about an agreement. I'm talking about the constitution of your party. The constitution of the party is what you are talking about. I said, once you agree there there's a difference, of course you follow the position of the constitution. But if you miss it, like me and you have agreed, there's a debt that you are supposed to pay me, and I agree on the time limit in which you are going to pay me that particular debt, and you did not pay, then you start giving me rules and regulations. Where would that come from? You have to pay first based on agreement. So what I'm saying and is that that document of agreement for us to have an all-inclusive national convention based on the constitution must be done. 
So the um, agreement is based on the Constitution? Of course. It doesn't run foul of, of the Constitution? I didn't mention part of the Constitution for you. I mentioned the section uh, 9 and 10 and 11 of the Constitution. Nine, section 11 of the Constitution gives you a choreographic position of the structures of the party. Are you How aware um, that Mr. B may be played out in this particular situation? Oh, no. Oh, no. As long as Because the original owners of the party now seem to be coming together. Yes, but of course, Mr. Peter Obi, His Excellency, is a brand of his own. So if it's not Labour Party today, it could be another party tomorrow. It's a brand of his own. And so he, we joined the party as a movement, the National Constitutive Front. When we joined, <coughs> before he also joined in the party. And then I was part of the committee that you know, uh, conducted the particular election that Osha Yimin as a presidential candidate of the party. So we believe that we have this, what you are seeing on the third force is not today's work. We are talking about okay. six to seven years' work or even more than that that dovetail into this particular Labour Party that you are seeing. So we keep on working. We keep on working. We are like Tamil. What we want is to get Nigeria on the right path. And so if you have a candidate who has a particular capacity, and the zeal and the competency to lead Nigeria out of the wood, we will move along with him. So very yes. quickly, sorry, Jeffrey, um, totally Mr. Mr. Peter Obi, he's had a very loud silence through everything that is happening, and you're still expressing confidence that he's the right man to lead the country. Why has he been silent? There was no silence. He just came out of a Twitter space speaking to the obedient group and the Nigerian people. No, about no the silence. leadership, about the leadership There topic. was no silence at all. What has he said? Is he still in support of Mr. Julius Aburi as no, national chairman? No, he said the right thing must be done. That's what okay. he said. If he was, mm -hmm. you would have seen me at the convention. All right. Tough. Well, uh, you speak with action. There, there, there's, a lot, there's a lot to talk about as far as the Labour Party is concerned. But we must also tell you, you're losing out on a few fronts. Uh, seven members or six or so have left your party to join, I think, the PDP in Enugu State. That's what happens when the House is not cohesive enough. Uh, and you should also know, mm. you lose some and you gain some. There you go. Dr. Yunise Tanko, <laughs> Chief Spokesperson of <laughs> the Organization. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank we you wish very your much party the very best. It's good Thank to see you in Lagos. Yes, yes. yes. We've never seen you in Lagos. Good to see you in Lagos. We've only seen you in Abuja. <laughs> okay, don't worry. <laughs> so come more often. So yeah, no problem. We have this engagement. Thank you very much. Wish your party the best. God bless you and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Absolutely. Now we should guess, uh, and no, not, no longer politics. We're done with politics for today's Easter Monday. So we'll switch gears now when we'll come back to talk about the softer side of things, which has to do with movie making. One of the shining lights will also join us today on the program. Join us again.